Well, welcome to Friday Night Live. This is Robert Henderson. It's great to have you with us today. You know, we've been talking over the last several weeks out of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, where the Apostle Paul said, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. And then it begins to list some other things. And what Paul was actually dealing with there was how to change the mindset of a culture. Uh, But then as he walks through that process, he gets down to, if you will, the nitty gritty gritty of us controlling our own thoughts and our own mindsets. Because, see, the the enemy wants to to do something on a huge scale so that people began to think underneath his auspices or underneath his control. But all of us have a choice in the way we think. So let me read this scripture for us here in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, verse 4 through 6. And we're going to talk about bringing thoughts captive, learning how to exercise the authority God has given us and bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So here's what he says. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. We dealt with that, what a stronghold is. Casting down arguments. We talked about arguments, the things that the enemy contends uh, to to, to grab hold of the thinking of an entire culture and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And that's where the Antichrist spirit comes in and begins to uh, exalt foreign ideas, alien ideas that began to take root in culture and dictate the way a culture thinks. And then it says, um, and bringing every thought captive to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. And we'll deal with that next week. So here's what we're going to talk about today. How to exercise the weapons of our warfare and actually take captive any and every thought that is foreign, that is alien, that is in contradiction to who God is in our own lives on a personal level. So we've looked at strongholds, we've looked at arguments, and we've looked at high things. Today we're going to talk about every thought being brought into captivity. Now listen, to bring, and I've been doing this for years, To bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, that takes spiritual activity and an exercise of authority. In other words, it is a discipline that we learn to walk in. We don't let our thoughts control us. We control our thoughts. Now, most people let their thoughts control them. But we don't let our thoughts control us. We control our thoughts. So you got to understand, feelings come out of, or wrong feelings, if you will, come out of incorrect thinking. If you can change the way you think, you can change the way you feel. But that requires exercising the authority Jesus has given us and taking those thoughts into captivity and causing them to come under the dominion of Christ. Now, let me give you a statement I heard years ago, and some of you may have heard this, because it illustrates how powerful a thought can be, whether it's a wrong thought or a right thought. Watch this. It says, it says, sow a thought, reap an action. Sow an action, reap a habit. Sow a habit, reap a lifestyle, and sow a lifestyle, and you will reap a a future or an eternity. Now, I'm going to go back over that again. Everything starts with, everything begins with a thought. Watch what he says, or watch what he said. Sow a thought, what happens? You reap an action. If you think about something long enough, it will give birth to an action. And then if you persist in that action, it becomes a habit. If you persist in that habit, it becomes a lifestyle. And if you live out that lifestyle, you have just reaped for yourself an eternity or a future. See, but it all started with a thought. Notice what Jesus said in Matthew 15, verses 18 through 20. It says, but those things which proceed out of the mouth, because he's talking about what defiles a man, those things that proceed out of the of a mouth uh, uh, come from the heart and defile a man. Now notice what Jesus mentions first. For out of the heart proceeds what? Thoughts. See, he, he lists thoughts first. Out of the heart proceeds 
thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands doesn't defile a man. So here's what he said. He said, these things come out of the heart. Thoughts. If you don't control the thoughts, it can eventually lead to murders, to adulteries, to fornications, to theft. See, thoughts are... Or everything starts, I don't care what it is, everything starts as a thought. So notice that this is the first thing that Jesus mentions. So we are told that we have to exercise from the authority we have been granted. We have, we have to exercise bringing every thought captive, bringing every thought captive captive to the obedience of Christ. Now that word captivity, it's an interesting word. Here's what it means. To lead away captive, to make a prisoner of war. In other words, we take our thoughts captive and we say, you are our prisoner. We will tell you what to do. You won't tell us what to do. That's what happens with a prisoner. See, the fact a prisoner, the thing that makes him a prisoner is they no longer have a will of their own. They are now being told what they can and cannot do. See, Jesus is saying to us, the Apostle Paul is saying to us, you need to exercise the authority I've given you and take captive, make it your prisoner, make every thought your prisoner so that you are telling it what to do, not it telling you what to do. So thoughts are very, very powerful things. Now, let me give you Another scripture, Philippians 4, 6 through 8. Watch what he says, be anxious for nothing. Okay, so he says, he's talking now about worry, about concern and fear. He says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of Watch this. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. So watch what he says. He said, a proper prayer life will bring you into the peace that passes understanding. In other words, the situations may look like you shouldn't have peace, but the Spirit of God, because you have because you have taken control of the situation through prayer, the Spirit of God is assuring you that everything's going to be okay. See, when it says it will guard, that word guard literally means a sentry standing, looking down the road, testifying back to you that's what's coming to towards you is good and not evil. That's what that word means. So you've got to understand, when you pray, when you control things through your prayer life, the peace of God will assure you that even though things might look out of order in the natural, what is coming towards you is good, and you can put confidence more in what you don't see than what you do see. So that's the peace of God that passes all understanding. But then what Watch what he says. He says, the next verse says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, watch this, meditate or think on these things. So notice what he's saying here. Prayer produces the peace that goes beyond understanding. It, 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 prayer produces a peace that may be completely opposite of what the natural realm says. But watch this. But right thinking sustains that peace in our life. See, you got to understand this. If you let, if you, if you, once you have peace in your heart because your prayer life has given birth to it and you are assured by the Spirit things are good, you sustain that in your life by taking control of your thoughts and, and, and ruling over your thoughts so that your thoughts are not bringing fear into your life, but your thoughts are bringing assurance into your life. So feelings and emotions are a result of our thoughts. Now remember that Paul is addressing the ability to revoke Satan's rights to establish or create mindsets and culture. But once that is done, we have to take control of each one of our thoughts. Now, here's what you got to understand. 
These, the ability to think correctly will flow out of us being a new creation. You see, in other words, every one of us that are truly born again, you have been given a new nature. You have been given the nature of God himself. Let me show you this. Ephesians 2, 1 through 6. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, air, the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience. So watch what he said. He said, you once were under Satan's domain, but you were quick and you were made alive. There is a new nature that has been formed in you. You're no longer walking according to the prince of the power of the air that is causing you to think and to operate in a certain way. It said, watch this, among whom also you once conducted yourself in the lust of your flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath just as others. But God, watch this, but God who is rich in his mercy because of his great love with which he has loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So watch, we have been repositioned in the spirit world so that we should be thinking differently than we used to think when we were under, under the domain of Satan. So watch, the world may still be under the domain of Satan. We still may be warring to free cultures, but you as an individual, I as an individual, I am not under the domain of Satan. I am literally under the authority of Jesus. I have been repositioned in the spirit world. Therefore, I should think differently. See, this is what Colossians 1 and 2, uh, Colossians 3 Verses 1 and 2 says, it says, and uh, even then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Watch. So he said, if you have been raised up with Christ, if you've been repositioned, if you've been born again, you're no longer under the domain of Satan. You're now under the authority of the kingdom of God. He said, then here's what he said, seek the things which are above. In other words, your desires have changed, your longings have changed, because when you were born again, a new nature came into you, you have been repositioned in the spirit world. Now watch what he said. It says, if that has happened, then set your mind on things above, not on the things of the earth. See, in other words, control your thinking. Stop thinking about the things of the earth. You have a new nature that is empowering you to think the thoughts of God and to think in agreement with those things and not the things of the earth. So when we begin to realize that we have been repositioned in the spirit world, we are now empowered to think with new Thoughts, And I want to encourage us in this today because this, this, listen, because so many people think they don't have the power to control their thoughts. But the truth is, if you're born again, if you have God's nature living in you, because that's what it means to be born again, if his seed, his nature is in you, then we do have the power to exercise an authority to take control of our thoughts. Now, I will say this, it's not always easy. It's not always easy, but the more we do it, the more we exercise that, the more we, we find we have the ability to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Now, I want to pray for us. We're, we're going to pray, then we're going to take a short little break, and then I'm going to be back. But I want to pray for us right now that we would ascend, that we would take our place, that we would recognize we are seated in heavenly places with him, and that from that position, I have the authority, I have the right to control my thoughts and to bring every thought captive to make it my prisoner of war. And those thoughts, listen, those thoughts of depression, those thoughts of fear, those thoughts of lust, those thoughts that want to control us, they will have no power over us. 
that we literally understand that those things were crucified with Christ and that we have been risen up to sit in heavenly places with him. So, Father, I want to pray right now over your people. I want to pray that we would have a revelation that we have been seated in heavenly places. And therefore, from that place, we have an authority. We are not victims. We have an authority to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ and make it a subjected, subdued thing as our prisoner of war. That our thoughts will not tell us what to do, but we, Lord, will tell our thoughts as prisoners of war what they can and what they cannot do. I pray that this would be the the reality that would come and grab hold of us as your people and that we might recognize this place of great power that you have given us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now stay tuned. I'm going to be right back and we're going to talk some more about how to bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And I promise you, this will cause, can cause, your life to change forever. I'll be right back. Welcome back. I hope you uh, enjoyed those announcements. We want to keep you uh, communicated with. We want to keep you up to date of what's going on or what's coming, what's coming about, what's available to you. We want to empower you. See, one of the things we're here to do is to empower. Empower you. Probably the main thing we're here for is to empower you to live a victorious Christian life and to find it out that you are a victor in Christ Jesus, that in him he always causes us to triumph. Amen. And so we're going to talk, we're going to continue to talk now about some keys to bring every thought captive. Again, this is a huge thing that we learn how to exercise the authority we have been granted so that we control those thoughts that seem like want to run rampant or the temptations that come or whatever it may be that we have the power and the ability to bring those thoughts Captive. So let me give us some keys, some, about five keys here to bringing every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Okay, number one, have a deep desire to please the Lord. That's the first thing. Now, where does that desire come from to please the Lord? It comes from, as I said earlier, it comes from the new nature that is on the inside of you. You see, none of us in the natural have a desire. The Bible actually says that before we were born again, we were aliens and we were at enmity with God. We were in enmity with God. What does that mean? That means we were God's enemies. We were God's enemies. We were against God. But see, when we are born again, God comes into our heart. His very nature, who he is, comes into our life. And now instead of being the enemies of God and being at enmity with God, we are friends of God. Well, with that goes this deep desire to please the Lord. So why do we want to control our thoughts? Why do we want to take captive our thoughts? It's because out of that nature that is in us, We have this deep desire to please God. We have this deep desire to live holy. We have this deep desire to be a people of purity because we have been born again. Listen, none of us have that in our old nature, but that is a part of the new nature of the nature of God that's in us. 
So let me show you the scripture. First John three, nine, whoever has been born of God does not sin. Now, that doesn't mean we can't sin. What, what, what the writer is saying is that if you've been born of God, you're not going to persist in willful sin because you can't because you will be miserable. You will be miserable. The conviction of the Holy Spirit, the new nature that's in you, you're going to see it, won't allow it. So whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his seed or his nature, the nature of God, his seed remains in him. It's in us. He said, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. See, John is trying to get people to understand that when we are born again, the nature, the seed of God, the, 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 the desires of God, and this is what I say about his nature, it makes you hate what you used to love and love what you used to hate. It literally just turns things completely around so that you now have a brand new set of passions that drive your life. Okay, so he says, if I've really been born of God, if his seed is in me, it says I cannot sin and be happy in it. It says because his seed, his nature, watch, remains in me. It remains in me. And I cannot live that way anymore. Why? Because I have been born of God. It's what we read earlier in Ephesians chapter 2. This, that, that which was dead came alive in us. So what happens with that comes this deep desire and longing to please God. It goes, it's so deep within us. We want to please him with every passion of our heart. And, and the desire is there to please him. And that's a, it's a driving thing in us that, that is, is compelling and driving us forward into new realms of purity and even new realms of holiness. Now watch Genesis 6 verse 5. Watch what it says. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. See, this was the state after the fall. That by Genesis chapter 6, after Adam and Eve have, have fallen, this is the state. That the thought of man's heart, every thought, every intent of the thought of man's heart was evil continuously. In other words, he only thought thoughts that were opposing God, that were against God. Why? Because that's the old nature. But see, in Jesus Christ, when please remember, when Jesus died on the cross, he didn't just die for us. We died with him. That old nature that thought evil thoughts continually, it died with Jesus on the cross. And that new nature that is in us is now desiring to serve God and think correct thoughts. So, Father, I pray right now, let that just become the reality in the heart of us, your people. We are born again. I want you to say this out loud. Say, I am born again. Therefore, I desire to please God. Therefore, I think the thoughts of God. Therefore, I have the mind of Christ. And I think the thoughts that he thinks about me as well. See, our thought processes began to change because we have been born again. And out of that new nature, we have this intense desire to please him. Okay, let me give you a second key. A second key is secrets are revealed. Secrets are unveiled. See, why? What is a key to learning how to take captive thoughts? Well, here's the here's the key. I'm going to be judged for my thought life. I'm going to be judged. I'm going to stand and give an account for my thought life. In Matthew chapter 9 and verse 4. See, you got to understand this. Here's Jesus, if you will, walking the earth. He is, he is walking the earth as a man, but he's also God. And so the powers of the Holy Spirit are moving through him. So watch what it says in Matthew 9 and verse 4. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? 
See, how many of you know, Jesus knew the thoughts of those around him. I mean, several times in scriptures, we see him perceiving people's thoughts. Listen, if Jesus as a man walking the earth knew the thoughts of people that were around him, how much more does he as God sitting at the right hand of God know our thoughts today? See, the Bible says all things are naked and open to him with whom we have to do. Everything is manifested before him. Everything is seen before him. There's nothing hidden. The Bible says there's nothing hidden. He knows our thoughts. And so what I find in the Lord is that whenever I first began to serve the Lord and was a Christian, he dealt with my actions. Maybe he dealt with my words. But I promise you, the longer I walk with God, the more he wants me to learn how to control my thoughts because he comes and even deals with the thoughts of my heart. Just like Jesus did when he walked the earth. Romans 2 verse 16. In in the day, watch this, in the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. See, Paul said, look, you got to understand something. There is coming a day when God will judge not just every the things that everybody sees. God is going to judge the secrets The secrets of men. What are some of the secrets? It's our thoughts. It's our thoughts. And I say, Lord, I want to think right thoughts. I want to think holy thoughts. I want to think pure thoughts. I want to think right thoughts about others. I want to think right thoughts about myself. See, do you understand self-image or identity is all about your thought life? It's all about your thought life, that you are thinking, the the thoughts you think about yourself determine the identity that you have or the self-image that you carry. Listen, if you can change the way you think about yourself, if you can change that inner dialogue about yourself, then you can change the, the way you see yourself, the image you have of yourself, the identity of who you are. See, God will teach us how to do this. But I have to realize I am going to give an account before God. I will stand and give an account before God of the the secret thoughts of my heart. And I want my life to be pleasing, to be acceptable before him, and that the secrets of my life, when the, when, the, when the veil is pulled back, it won't be this horrendous thing. It will actually be a place, if you will, where there is holiness and there is purity that is found. And so let me pray. Father, I just want to pray that even you said in your word that you knew the thoughts and that there is coming a day when the secrets of men will be revealed. Lord, may in the secret places of our heart, may we be thinking the right thoughts. May we be exercising ourselves to bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, Lord. Lord, we would ask that you would empower us to do this in Jesus' name. Okay, number three, number three. This is going to go back to something I was addressing earlier. But if we're one of the keys, in fact, I believe a major key to to taking every thought captive is use the authority given to you. Now, I want to say something here. We want God to come and do everything for us. But I'm sorry, he does not. He does. I want you to hear what I'm about to say. He will never do for us what he has given us authority to do for ourselves. In John chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. I'm going to give you something we've got to understand today. Oh, God, come and deliver me. Oh, God, set me free from these thoughts. It's not going to happen. Here's what he says to you. Cleanse yourself from all filthiness of flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. In other words, you take the authority I've given you and you do it. You do it. Watch what he says here. John 1, 11 and 12. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. They rejected him. They didn't receive him. Watch this. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right. And that word right is exousia. It's authority. To them he gave the authority to what? To become 
children of God to those who believe on his name. Notice what he says. He says, when you come and you receive him, we talk about receiving Jesus into our heart as our Lord and our Savior. Well, you need to understand, when you received him, he gave you an authority to take control of your life and to be transformed and to become children of God. That's why Jesus said, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Perfect. Take control of your life. Everything that is opposing God, that is out of an agreement with God, you have been given, I have been given the authority to subdue that thing and say, no, my life is going to line up with him. See, that means we use the authority given to us. Some of us need to stop being spiritually lazy. And use the authority that God has granted us and subdue thoughts and every other thing under his authority so that our lives began to change. Now, people throughout the ages have made this mistake. Even Moses, for instance, made this mistake. Moses literally, uh, he's standing at the Red Sea with the Egyptian army pushing against him, and he is crying out to God to deliver them. And God says to him, why do you cry to me? And he says, what did I put in your hand? There's a rod. It's a, it is an instrument of authority. It's the authority of God. He says, stretch the rod out over the Red Sea and you divide. Watch, God was not going to do for Moses and the children of Israel what God had given Moses the authority to do. We must realize we have to rise up in our authority and God will help us, but we have to rise up in the authority we have been granted and we need to use the rod of that authority and subdue and remove everything that would be hindering us so that we can come into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. So using the authority of God is absolutely essential. This is why... Paul tells us that we are to take captive or bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's something I'm supposed to do. Now, God gives us grace and we cry out and we ask him for mercy and all sorts of things. But I have to choose to move in that direction and to to exercise that realm of authority so that the thoughts began to be subdued under the Lord. And I learned to think out of the mind of Christ that the Lord has given me. Okay, number four. Number four. How do we, what are some keys to bringing every thought captive? We need to guard our gates. Guard the gates. Second Peter 2, 7 through 8. It, it, it talks about how God delivered righteous Lot, who was, watch, he was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. In Sodom and Gomorrah, for that righteous man, watch this, dwelling among them, tormented his righteous soul from day to day. Why or how? By seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. See, seeing the eyes and the ears are gates. They are gates. And so uh, a lot was not guarding the gates. He was, he was, he was, he was looking upon. He was, he was so, the, the, the culture was so prevalently wicked that literally he was hearing and seeing the deeds of the wicked and, and that was having interest and it was vexing his righteous soul. Why? Because it was making him think thoughts that he wouldn't have otherwise been thinking. And he was a righteous man. I'm here to tell you many people, many righteous people are living vexed, bewitched lives because they, they are not protecting the gates. Those entry points where that things come in through the eyes and through the ears. 
And, and listen, we live in a culture where it is full of filthiness and full of wickedness and all sorts of things. We must guard the gates. We must determine what we look at, what we see, what we hear. We must guard the gates. The mouth is another gate, by the way. The things that come out of our mouth, Jesus said that's what defiles a man. We must guard the gates so that we think correctly. I prom I do promise you, if you will exercise, if I will exercise this discipline of guarding the gates, of, of not looking at things I shouldn't be looking at, of not listening to things I shouldn't listen to, of not speaking things I shouldn't be speaking. Listen, if I will take control of the gates, my mind, the 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 ability to take captive thoughts will be a whole lot easier exercise for me. I remember years ago, uh, whenever we, I was a, I was trying to co- become free from some things. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about, I'm talking about in the 80s, if you will, late 70s and 80s, as as I was surrendering my heart to the Lord. Listen, I had to stop listening to secular music. I just did. I had to stop in that season from hearing any secular music because the secular music was literally bringing a defilement. Now, I'm not telling you what you should and should not do, but I made my mind up right then that I would only listen to Christian music. And I'm telling you, that was a huge, huge decision that that allowed my mind to begin to be renewed. According to Romans chapter 12, my mind began to be renewed so that I began to think in a different way. And I came into new realms of victory. And then the same thing is for what we let our eyes look upon and see. And, and my gosh, the Internet today. And, and you can just be a casual surfer of the Internet and all sorts of things pop up. And it's all designed to allure you away. But please hear me. If we will take control and we will guard our gates, the eyes, the ears, the mouth. If we will guard those gates, we will have a great a power, a greater power to bring into captivity. Activity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Okay, number five, we should enjoy peace. The last one, we should enjoy peace. In Isaiah 26, verse 3, watch this. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Okay, he said, you will keep him in perfect peace. Watch this, whose mind is stayed. The word perfect peace, it literally means double peace. That's what it word. That's what it literally means. That's the right translation is you will keep him in double peace. In other words, there will be this abounding measure of peace. Jesus promised his disciples, my peace I give to you. Listen, there is a way to live in supernatural peace. But notice something. It says whose mind is stayed on you. So, in other words, this supernatural peace is what I said earlier. Our prayer life will bring us into the peace that passes understanding, but our thought life will sustain that peace in our life. Because if my mind is stayed on Him, if I am meditating upon Him, and by the way, the word meditation, it's like in Joshua chapter 1, where it says, meditate upon the Word of God day and night, the law of God day and night. It literally means to meditate. Murmur it to yourself. That's what the word meditation does. That you're, you're, you're murmuring the word. You're quoting the word to yourself. Listen, if you do that, if you exercise those disciplines, if you, if you take authority and do this, the Bible says there will be a perfect peace, a double peace, a supernatural peace that will come and rule over your life. And all the frantic anxious things that the world is in today, you won't be subject to that. Why? Because that is a result of thinking wrong thoughts. The lack of peace, the fear, the anxiety, wrong ideas about ourselves it all comes out of the root of thinking wrong thoughts that, that are birthed out of the realms of hell and not out of the realms of heaven. Amen. So listen, God is empowering us today to bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, 
to, to subject those thoughts and say, nope, you will not rule over me. You will not tell me what to do. You, in fact, are my prisoner of war. And I will tell you what you can and what you cannot do. And, and I'll tell you, let me just tell you this. If we do this, we will consistently go up into realms of authority that are provided for us in the spirit world. And this is what I've discovered. The more authority I exercise over myself, the more authority I have against the powers of darkness. Because if I don't have any authority over myself, I certainly don't have any authority over the powers of darkness. But if I can exercise authority over my thoughts at this root level, I promise you, things come to order in my life, and guess what happens? I then have new realms of authority I can operate in in the spirit world over the powers of darkness. So, Father, I pray for every one of us today, every one of us that are your believers, that belong to you, that we have been born again. We have your nature in us. Lord, therefore, we have received you. And you said, whoever receives you, you give us authority that we might become, we're being transformed. It's a, it's a, it's not, it's not like we, we are, it's that like we're becoming, we're, 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 we're maturing, we're growing into the whole realm of being the children of God and reflecting the very nature and character of who you are. Lord, we ask for grace. We ask for grace that we might be empowered to use the authority you have given us that we would take control of our thoughts and our thoughts would no longer control us, but we would, Lord, control our thoughts and see new levels of authority released in us and through us for the glory of God. We thank you for that this day, Lord. Thank you for granting this over us this day, we pray. Thank you for the presence of the living God, for the holiness of who you are established in us in Jesus' name. I want you to just receive that right now. Listen, I release according to what Jesus said, as many as received him, to them he gave authority. I decree that we have been granted authority and we use it to control our thoughts on every level. And we thank you for doing it. We receive, it's like we receive a mantle from the Lord that allows us to function in that realm and in that way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And we want to, listen, we want to bring our offering today. We want to bring our offering to the Lord and worship Him. Out of, listen, Worship him out of his generosity into our life, that we would be generous. See, you know what grace is? Grace is the generosity of God. And the Bible says that when the women that had been set free from demon powers, it says that they took care of Jesus with their substance. Why? Because when we've been touched by the generosity of God, it unlocks generosity in us. I can't help but be generous toward the Lord. Why? Because I have partaken of and been blessed by His generosity. Lord, thank you that your generosity of your grace has changed me. That new nature I have on the inside of me is a generous nation, a nature that delights and loves to bring offerings unto you. Lord, even as we step into this realm of using the authority you have given us out of the new nature of God that we have received, we release right now our offerings. We release our offerings right now of worship and of adoration, offerings of generosity, O oh God, because we have received of your generosity and your kindness and your goodness into our life. Lord, I just want to thank you for being so good to us. And I want to ask you to bless your people across this nation and the nations of the earth as we bring our offerings to worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. 
Thank you so much for it. And Lord, even as we bring our offerings, as we sow our seed, let new releases of glory and power, I pray, come over us as your people. Thank you for doing this. We love you. We thank you for it. It's our privilege. It's our honor to worship you with the first and the best that you have given to us, Lord. Thank you for it so much, Lord. Thank you for it so much, Lord. Thank you for caring for us, Lord. Thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. May the blessing of God be on you. Thank you for being a part of Friday Night Live. Thank you for sowing. Thank you for bringing your offerings and worshiping Him. We love you very much. It's a great honor to be with you. You are a part of GPEC. These times are times of empowerment where that, where that the, the word of the Lord and the law of the Lord and, and the secrets, the mysteries of the kingdom are unveiled and go into our life so that we can be empowered to live life and to walk in an entirely different way. May the blessing of God be upon you. Thank you for being a part of who we are and what we do and allowing us to be a part with you. May his grace abound over you. We'll see you soon.